studio production begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hi, I'm Erica Joseph, President at the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and welcome to the Community Foundation Spotlight. I am thrilled to be joined uh, with Stacy Wisner, the brand new Executive Director at the Delmarva Discovery Center and Museum. Welcome, Stacy. Thanks for having me, Erica. I appreciate it. So I know that you are, um, you know, new. You've been there just a little over three months now, and have jumped right in to uh, the Delmarva Discovery Center world. And one of the first things I'll note is that from the last time we highlighted um, the organization, it's changed its name. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about that change. Sure. So um, what happened is we are actually a museum. We felt the name should be indicative of it. And to be honest, um, when I was invited to apply for the job, I went to search the financials on GuideStar. The um, tax forms are always transparent and they're online. And I couldn't find it because the name at that time was Pokemoke Marketing Partnership because that's how it was developed. So we officially changed our name to Delmarva Discovery Center and Museum. Which is truly more reflective of the great facility that is there in Pocomoke and um, it certainly has uh, rotating exhibits, new things that come in all the time and so it's, um, it's wonderful to see that name change and hopefully people will be able to uh, find it easier and really know what it is that, that you're working to do there. So thanks for uh, sharing that with our viewers. Um, now. So many people have visited um, mm -hmm. the DDC over the years, and um, I'm wondering if you can tell them a little bit um, about any new exhibits or changes to the existing exhibits they may have seen in the past. Sure, so one of the things we're working on right now, our big excitement is we're starting a capital campaign. Um, we have a huge 6,000 gallon aquarium that had fish in it, and we wanted to freshen up the space and freshen up um, you know, the Discovery Center in general, and we are exploring the possibilities and we will be applying for a grant, uh, I'm sorry, for an application from USDA, a class three permit to have river otters. And it'll be a very interactive exhibit and we are hoping to actually get big tubes coming up in the ceiling, uh, and up high, about eight foot high from the ceiling of the exhibit coming back in so you can actually see them above your head. And, so and then you'll see them playing in the water. So we're real excited about that. And so that'll add an element. And so, you know, this fits into the overall mission and goals of the Delmarva Discovery Center and Museum, which has been a resource in our community for really not that long. It's, it's, it's a relatively new addition to the, the Lower Eastern Shore, mm -hmm. um, you know, fabric of community organizations. Tell our viewers, if they haven't had a chance to know um, the organization and the, and the museum in the past, what, what the mission and the goals are for it. Sure. We are a hands-on interactive museum uh, for all ages, really geared a lot towards children. Uh, we're very handicap accessible uh, when you get inside the building, a couple of ramps to get around. But um, when you walk into the hallway, the very first thing you'll notice is a 14-foot sailboat. Um, and it's a 14-foot cat boat, and it's interactive. You push a couple of buttons, the kids climb in it, and the wind fills the sail, and they can move the tiller and act like they're sailing. So that sets the stage as you walk in. We have a 60-foot steamship. Um, and with two stories, and you can go upstairs and actually uh, steer the steamship and, uh, you know, pull the whistle. Um, we have a beaver lodge that was dismantled from Virginia, um, and kids climb in that, and they can see below the water line where the beavers would have gone in. Uh, we have a wigwam. We have a lot. We have an oyster tonguing exhibit that you can, you know, try to lift it up as a, a waterman. Um, but it, everything we do there is we're trying to make it more interactive and more hands-on. We're trying to self-improve. Well, and I notice having had my child there in the past, but also mm -hmm. being at events that have been hosted there, because it's also a place where, um, um, you know, adults can, can find their inner child. You know, trying that oyster tonguing is not, mm -hmm. is not as easy as it might look, and mm -hmm. sort of exploring all the things that are due there. It's, it's just as much fun for the, you know, for the grown-ups as it is for the kids when you visit. Mm -hmm. um, now, I know that you have some um, some new things planned in addition to the the new exhibit that you talked about mm -hmm. with the with um, the beavers and live animals mm -hmm. are always a draw. Um, but I know that you've been really focused on adding some new elements. Um, you've had live animals um, as part of the museum for quite some time, um, which is always a huge attraction for visitors. And so share a little bit, you know, about what some of the things our fo folks will see in addition to the exhibits. Sure. We have a lot of animals. We have um, a 40-pound snapping turtle. Which, she's huge. Um, her name is Sarah. We have a lot of turtles, a lot of snakes, a bullfrog, a tarantula, 
And again, when we get the river otters, that'll just add that other element. But we have a lot of animals. If you come to the museum and the animals aren't out on the floor for a program event, you can ask the front and they will call back and we will have someone bring out something for you. We want to make every time you come there to be the best experience you had. And the way we can grow is by word of mouth if we've exceeded your expectations when you come. Mm -hmm. And I know that when you come in, um, one of the first things you see is the beautiful um, museum store that you yeah. have there. Um, with you know art and um, children's toys I mean that's a that's just a wonderful place to visit and, and wander around before you leave to take some merchandise along it's a first class uh, first class museum store Barbara Tall who's a founder of the Discovery Center along with some other people she's been working on it for about 15 years now that that is her baby um, and it's it is just first class all price points from a dollar from school groups come in um, up to some very nice artwork and we're really proud of it. We have um, clothing and any type of gifts. I, I bought quite a few gifts for Christmas there this year. I could see I yeah. visited recently and I was wandering around there and I, I could see how it would be very easy to um, find something for everybody on your list. Um, now if I'm going to visit the store, if any of our viewers, um, the, the store, the museum, mm -hmm. all that it, there is to do there, what are your regular hours? So during the winter we're closed on Mondays. We're open um, Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Sundays, 1 to 4. And then in the summer, our hours expands 10 to 4, seven days a week. And it's a great place to visit um, throughout the year because of your proximity to a number of other um, things to do right there in Pocomoke. I know the Marva Theater is down the street. Mm -hmm. There's a restaurant right next door. So it really can be a, a good daytime destination. It's for... a great, great day trip or evening trip. Um, I eat at the... Riverside Grill four days a week anyway, and um, we have our board meetings there, and it's just it's a wonderful facility. It, our building, the museum, and the Riverside Grill is actually both owned by the city of Pocomoke. Okay. So it's an, um, an idea to try to get more visitors downtown. When Walmart came to town and the traffic came off of the main street, you know, which is called Market Street in Pocomoke, um, it, this was an effort to try to get more visitors back into the area. And you all have been doing a wonderful job. Thank you. I can imagine with a facility like the D Delmarva Discovery Center and Museum mm -hmm. that in addition to all of the um, fundraising that you do, all the grant writing that you do to, to find ways to enhance um, the, the facility, that, there, that there's a lot that goes into making that run. Is there a fee that's associated for visitors if they come? It is. Um, the fee is $10 for an adult, $8 for seniors, $5 for students. Um, the membership is really the way to go. The family membership for a year is only $40. And so that's for, you know, less than you can, a lot of times when, when a family comes in, it might be $2 more. Um, but what we also do is we have a lot of school groups come in. Um, and school children are $3, and if it's a Title I school, it's even less. Uh, we really make ourselves available. We have um, students from Head Start, um, and we really, really take having the school children in very seriously. We, it's an all hands on deck. We call volunteers in, and we have two or three people from either staff or docents or volunteers that help each group as they go around and make it really fun. For a lot of the children, it's a lot, the first time they've ever been in a boat, for example. And, and that's surprising when you mm -hmm. when you realize that we're here on the eastern shore, but yeah. that's so true for, for many students that, you know, it gives them some of their first access to those experiences. Yeah. Now, a couple things I want to mention um, as a follow-up to those. You have volunteers that serve yeah. at every level of the organization. Yeah. Could you share some of those opportunities or needs with, with viewers? Sure. So um, one of the things we want to work on really heavily um, is our docent program. And we'll be partnering with the Salisbury Zoo and the Word Museum. So, for example, we want to learn how to build our docent program as good as they both have their docent program. So we are going to partner any docent at the zoo or the Word Museum gets a free yearly membership to our museum. And in return, what we're asking for is that they come and, and self-critique us, help us figure out how to get our program up and running really good. We have some really great docents, but we really want to step it up and, and get quite a few more. So um, you can be a docent. You can help lead uh, tours when people come through. You can volunteer at the museum store. You can volunteer in the back in the quarantine room with the animals. We have um, a high school senior, uh, Michelle, is wonderful. She'll be leading our Youth Advisory Council. Um, she comes in four days a week, four hours a day. She's very faithful. She volunteered all summer. We have a lot of opportunities. We um, just built a few walls. We're doing painting. There's, there's, like you know, with a the nonprofit, there's always a need. Right. And so, how would, um, how would folks contact you? What's the best way for them to reach out to the Delmarva Discovery? Either Center? call the Discovery Center or email me at Stacy at Delmarva Discovery Center dot org. S T A C E Y. 
Excellent. Yeah. And you're watching the Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Erica Joseph, and my guest uh, is Stacy Wisner, the director at the Delmarva Discovery Center and Museum. And on this program, we always like to highlight sort of, the, you know, we focus on philanthropy. And we know that um, for a lot of people, that sounds sort of like an intimidating word. You know, if I'm, if I'm going to be a philanthropist, that means that I'm, you know, wealthy and I'm giving millions of dollars. But we know that that's about any person giving whatever amount they can mm -hmm. of their time, talent, and treasure. And you certainly um, have sort of embraced that over the years in a number of roles that you've had. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how you are working with um, sort of our youngest philanthropists in the community to establish this um, Youth Advisory Council for the museum. This is the thing that I'm probably the most excited about in the past three months I've been there. Um, we wanted to figure a way to reach out to children to get them involved. Um, we just had a donor, I'll tell you the story quick, we just had a donor that came in, um, Tom and Beth Hershey just came in and they made a very substantial pledge to us. And they brought their two grandsons with them. And they wanted me to teach their grandsons about philanthropy, about why we need the money, what it would go for, and they took that role seriously of training their grandchildren. Um, likewise, we want to, every child, we want them to feel like they have important input. You don't have to be rich to be able to give. Um, so a lot of our children, we're going to have a youth advisory council age 5 to 18, and the children will come in. We already have 42 on the list, and we have over 31 on a waiting list, and we've never advertised it. This is the first time we're talking about it publicly, um, except for the chamber luncheon yesterday. So we've not even done a press release yet, and we already have over 70 children. And what we want to do is divide them into elementary, middle, and high school ages, give them t-shirts, make them the council. So it's not me coming in and saying, this is what we want you to do. It'll be youth-led. Uh, we've been doing training with Michelle who will start leading the program and we want the children to go around and tell us how we can make it better. How can we make everything more exciting, more interactive? How can we make this exhibit STEM relatable, science, technology, engineering, and math? How can we make this more fun? For example, in the boat, we could have life jackets, teach the children how to put life jackets on. That was an idea that mm -hmm. already came out just as a brainstorming with the five people I reached out to. So we're really excited about that and we'll kick that off in March. And asking um, young people for advice, you're yeah. never going to get more honest feedback right. than you will from, yeah. you know, a seven-year-old. So yeah. that's a perfect way to engage people and to find out what really will motivate um, kids to encourage their their families to keep keep coming back on a regular basis. Right. And one other thing too, if I could, um, when I raised money for the zoo, we found out it was like 92% of our donors were either $50 or $100. You don't have to give $10,000 to be a donor. And you know, a lot of times people are afraid to ask for money or, or ask for help for a nonprofit, but it's really friend raising. You're just trying to build that relationship and, and when the opportunity strikes, if, if, if they feel like they would like to help you in different ways, there are a lot of different ways they can help. But if you're watching PAC 14 right now, just tell another friend about us. That's a huge way to help us. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, every single contribution of, of financial support, of time serving as a docent, as spreading that word of mouth, I mean, that's free marketing right. for, for the museum. So all of that helps with you know keeping the doors open and, and keeping the facility running. Exactly. You mentioned the science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM component, which yeah. is you know such a such a huge focus for so many um, schools and universities mm -hmm. and career development, um, workforce development folks. And I know that you have an exciting new. Um, um, facility improvement that you're doing that's focused specifically on that and it includes and uh, focuses on a wonderful partnership that you've established. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit about how that came to be and what the what the uh, impact will be on the museum? Sure. Um, it wasn't my idea. I don't take credit for things that aren't my ideas. It's Josh Fridells from the Worcester County Board of Ed and he's also on our board of directors. And we have a huge classroom um, and it's, we use it for multi-purposes and it's a great space for events also. But in that classroom, we're going to put a two-foot uh, countertop. Uh, one section will be handicap accessible, and then three sections will be the regular height. And there'll be four sinks within this wall of countertops. And above will be cabinets, and below it, little stools that'll push in. Um, and we can then have a STEM lab, if you will. University of Maryland Eastern Shore, um, we are so excited and so grateful. They've reached out to us, and they really uh, want to partner with us and probably loan us some of the equipment, microscopes, water testing kits, and also we want to work on a grant with UMES. We're going to be working on a grant for distance learning. So we can also teach in that classroom. If, if a class is in Missouri, we can teach about water testing or about tidal wetlands. So we're really excited about that partnership. Um, and 
I mean, every every chance every chance we get, you know, we just want to develop partnerships. We want to have memorandums of understandings with about 15 agencies right off the bat. Um, we have four students from Salisbury University interning there right now. One from Pocomoke High School. We'd like to get students from UMES and Warwick. So. Well, and that brings up the great point that we're so fortunate here on the on the Lower yeah. Eastern Shore. In addition to the the wonderful network of charitable organizations and civic groups, um, there is also the benefit of having. Um, two universities, two really mm -hmm. top-notch universities, and a very strong community college that just you know contribute to all the work that we do. Um, and it really is all of those partnerships working together that that um, help us all do our work better. It is the other thing though is the community foundation itself. You all have been instrumental in uh, helping me develop as a better fundraiser and, and networking and on and all the classes y'all offer so I want to give y'all uh, kudos too. Thanks well I appreciate that because we do really focus and, and we've had the benefit of working together for a number of years sure. in different roles and you know it highlights that no matter where we are which organization or, or what our role is at that time mm -hmm. that there's always something that we can do to sort of elevate ourselves um, in terms of skill development and that is one of the things we try to do through our nonprofit support program. So thank you for being a part of that yeah, and, and sure. for highlighting it. Um, this is Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Erica Joseph, and our guest today is Stacy Wisner, um, Executive Director at the Delmarva Discovery Center and Museum. And one of the things for, for viewers, I do want to plug your hours again because I know um, during these um, colder months, uh, at least that we're in right this moment, you're closed on Mondays, but you have a lot of opportunities for access. 10 to 4 on Tuesdays through Saturdays, and 1 to 4 on Sundays, closed Mondays. Um, and right now, when it's so cold out, I mean, we're 16,000 square feet, we're heated. It's a great place to come in. You can go to the restaurant next door if you want, but it's a wonderful place to come. My grandchildren are 13 and 11. They spent nine hours with me there one day and they can't wait to go back. I mean, it's, it's not something you can just see in an hour or two. It, you can spend most of the day there. And we'll make it really, really over the top fun for you. We'll bring out a lot of different things to entice you to stay longer. And that's true. I know we've been there personally mm -hmm. um, a number of times and the exhibits, there's just something else different for them to do. Um, I have a seven-year-old and so he's, I think the first time he was there he was barely tall enough to mm -hmm. look into the, the touch tank that I know you're in the process right. of, of rebuilding some of that right. to add additional things. And so he could barely look over the edge and now when he goes there he's, you know, almost able to sort of do the oyster tonging by himself. So yeah. you can you can do things at all ages. Now, there's an event that you all do there called the Night at the Museum. Yeah, we're, it's something we're going to be starting. We haven't done it yet, and uh, we'll be starting that probably in April, March or April, we're not sure yet, but we want to have sleepover opportunities. I have a really, really fun evening um, inside. We'll probably do a movie. Um, we thought it might be kind of fun to watch some movies about that. Uh, have some, some food, simple food, and then have families come and stay inside. We're also interested in talking to scout troops. Um, it has to be about 25, 30 kids anyway uh, to be able to really make it worthwhile. We also rent the space for birthday parties or um, events, rehearsal dinners, receptions. And we'd like to reach out to Pokemon High School and, and see how we can offer the space for free to them to mm -hmm. use for something fun. Yeah, that would be. I know that um, there are some um, museums over in the Baltimore area that do something very similar oh, and, right. and are, and are uh, very popular. I remember doing one of them as a Girl Scout when I was younger. So. Nice. It brings people in. It has a whole different feel yeah. to a facility like that in the evening. So that's a wonderful idea. Now, at the beginning of the program, we talked a little bit about your capital campaign mm -hmm. and your focus on adding the River Otter exhibit. Right. And so if we could revisit, because I know one of the core focus of the, mu of the museum is really highlighting the, the culture and the environment that, that we live in here and, and really putting a, um, a spotlight on that. For, mm -hmm. for all visitors. And so that River Otter exhibits a huge piece of that, but you're also doing a number of other improvements. And so maybe you could talk a little bit about what um, the capital campaign will allow you to do and how, and how people can get involved with sure. that. Sure, uh, any gift, large or small, we'd really appreciate it. I welcome the opportunity to show anybody in person. Uh, anytime it's convenient for you, you can call my cell phone, 443-880-8627. I'll meet you down there if it's more convenient for you when we're not open. Um, but what, one of the things we're trying to do is, again, make the STEM classroom. Um, the carpet in the building is older. Um, it's commercial grade, and we would like to come back in with some, especially in the classroom, we want, we want children to come back there and to feel like they can make a mess, and we can clean up the mess, and they can have fun. And part of that interactive uh, part in the back is 
putting in a wood plank floor, a vinyl type of product. Um, we want to put in some uh, lower ceilings, some drop ceilings, add a little bit more insulation. Um, 16,000 square feet is a bit of heat, um, but it's, it's a great partnership that we have with the city. They take care of um, a lot of issues that we have with the building, but the inside is what we're trying to fix up now. So the, the STEM classroom, the labs, um, the quarantine room in the back, uh, we've got some needs in the, in the back work area space. And then we want to you know, explore some ideas of doing some really cool other new exhibits and other, other types of aquariums too. And it's just such a wonderful resource for the entire community. So I would encourage anybody who has not had a chance to visit the museum to certainly put that on their to-do list. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that family memberships are really affordable, $40 yeah. for the year. Yeah. And so they can visit whenever they want. I mean, you can't really find a better deal than that. Um, and so we would encourage folks to come out and visit you. Um, also, just you know, as a final plug, you know, you, we've mentioned that there are volunteer needs for docents. You're doing a capital campaign. You are really focused on spreading the word about the museum, especially yeah. with its name change. But other things that um, you know individuals can do in the in the community to help strengthen the um, Discovery Center and museum. Sure. Um, some of the things, like for example, if anyone wants to come down and they just want to check us out, come down, check us out, and there are 20, 30 different ways you can help within the building. Um, if you want to help us work on an exhibit, if you want to help us plan out ideas, if you want to help us research what other museums are doing, I mean, let's be honest, we don't have to create something that nobody's ever thought of. We just have to make it really great and over the top better than what we already have and something unique to Delmarva. And so many people are passionate about this region. Yeah. And, there's and we're, only, we're only 30 minutes from Salisbury. A lot of people think, well, we're way down in Pocomoke, but you know, we're a local park pride worth a regional drive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate the time Thank today, you. Stacey. It's been wonderful to catch up with you and to hear about all the work that's going on down at the Delmarva Discovery Center and Museum. Thank and you. I appreciate um, you, sh you sharing this time with me. Thank you. You've been watching Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Erica Joseph, President of the Community Foundation, and I appreciate your time. Thanks. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC-14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC-14 is a great way to connect with your community.